Hey everybody, John Wagnon with Dev Central. We are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about a really powerful joint solution between F5 and Cisco that uses the F5 SSL orchestrator and the Cisco Firepower Threat Defense. And uh, this is a solution that you can inspect encrypted traffic. And you may know this, that 80 plus percent of all traffic on the internet today is encrypted. And a lot of times attackers will use that. In fact, they'll, they'll send uh, malware via encrypted traffic. Um, upwards of 70% of all malware today is actually used, you know, uses encryption to be sent across the internet. So, uh, you know, the issue is something needs to inspect all that traffic. And, um, and so the, the question is, how do you do that? Also, when you decrypt that, tra that traffic in order to inspect it, that decryption is a very computationally expensive process. And so you need something that's, uh, that's built in such a way to, uh, to decrypt that and look at it. All right, so here's kind of a common uh, way that people will do things today. You've got users out here. Maybe these are internal users accessing, you know, external resources on the internet. And so here's, uh, you know, the internet over here, internet. And these users will go through a series of security devices. Let's say you have like a, a data loss prevention device, or maybe there's some kind of, you know, other device. I'll just put a couple boxes here. Maybe you've got like a web, uh, web proxy device. Um, you know, that's out here as well. So what typically happens in this is what we call like a daisy chain uh, type setup. And what happens in this a lot of times is that the user traffic headed out to the internet will go through uh, one of these, but when it, when it gets to this one, this uh, device will have to decrypt the traffic, inspect it, and then re-encrypt it, and then send it on, and then so forth and so on. And so each one of these has to do all of that before it finally gets out to the internet. Uh, a couple of issues with this is that um, all of the traffic goes through every single one of these devices, and you may not necessarily need that to happen. Uh, another issue is that let's say one of these devices maybe cannot handle some of the TLS cipher suites that were established or negotiated between the user and the end uh, web application. And if that happens, then one of these devices, whichever one can't handle that encryption, it just drops out of the chain. And that creates a really, uh, a really bad security blind spot, you know, for this entire, uh, you know, solution. Um, and so there's, there's issues, you know, with that. Um, there are other things like the need to establish communication between these devices. Uh, there's also change control that could take a lot of time. There's configuration that has to be done on all this. Uh, there's latency that gets added. There's complexity, you know, with this type of a solution. So there's a lot of issues that go on with this daisy chaining, uh, you know, solution that, that a lot of companies will put together. So uh, I mentioned we have this powerful solution uh, between F5 and Cisco. So now we present a better way, frankly. So we have this product. F5 has a product called the SSL Orchestrator. So I'll write that out. SSL Orchestrator. And this product is, uh, works in, in a similar way in, in the fact or in the case that a user um, will connect now to the SSL orchestrator, and then the SSL orchestrator will then uh, connect out you know, here to the internet. So you still have the same basic setup, but now you've got the SSL orchestrator in line here. All right, whenever, whenever traffic arrives from a user into the SSL orchestrator, the SSL orchestrator will classify that traffic based on a number of different criteria. There's a source and destination IP address that it can look at. Uh, there's port number, there's domain name that's in play here. Uh, URL categorization can be uh, looked at. The different protocols uh, are looked at as well. So there's all kinds of different classification criteria that the SSL orchestrator will use. And then based on that classification, the orchestrator will then uh, decrypt what I'll call interesting traffic uh, and then it will send it on to the different security devices. So uh, a real quick representation of this, uh, in this case, let's say an internal user is going out to the internet to access a web application, whatever. The internal user comes into the SSL orchestrator and this traffic right here is encrypted, so that's a lock. And then the SSL orchestrator decrypts the traffic one time and then does what it does and then it re-encrypts the traffic so that it's encrypted out to the internet. Um, and so there are some things like bank websites or maybe government, um, you know, institutions or healthcare information, stuff like that, that you don't need to decrypt uh, because of privacy or, you know, other kind of regulations or governance laws or whatever. Um, 
And in that case, you can, uh, again, based on the classification here, you can just send that traffic right on through. And then in that case, the SSL orchestrator is essentially a, just a proxy device that just sends the traffic on through. So it does not decrypt the traffic that it does not need to decrypt, uh, and which frankly saves you a lot of time and effort and all that. Um, okay, the SSL orchestrator can be set up in a couple of different modes. It can be an explicit or transparent proxy. Um, it needs to be deployed in line to your traffic. And it, uh, and it supports both layer two and layer three modes of deployment. So like layer two, bumping the wire, layer three is um, you know, a, a routed you know, extra hop on your network uh, type deployment. Um, this also supports both inbound traffic and outbound traffic. So the, it, the uh, description that I've shown here is an outbound scenario where you've got internal um, enterprise network users that are destined for external websites. But also, you may have you know, a data center that you're trying to protect, and you've got external users coming in. So these, uh, you know, these, these arrows, frankly, can flow both ways, depending on how you set this thing up. So it's, uh, it's inbound and outbound deployments is what you can do. All right, like I said, this thing, um, you know, it, it, uh, it deals with traffic uh, through each of the different security devices. And so just like up here, you may have you know, a data loss prevention device and you may have like a web proxy uh, device, you know, right here. Um, but then the one that I really want to highlight today is called the Cisco, Cisco Firepower Threat Defense. And I'm gonna draw that right there. The Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, it's a fully integrated threat focused uh, next gen firewall uh, that has unified management. It's got a next gen uh, intrusion prevention system incorporated into it. It's got advanced malware protection. Uh, it does URL filtering. It does a lot of the security features that you've come to know and expect uh, and, uh, and appreciate, frankly, from Cisco. Um, and so what happens here is the Cisco, uh, the Cisco Firepower Threat Defense and the SSL Orchestrator have been designed in such a way that you can uh, connect these very efficiently, very, very quickly, and they work together very well. So, uh, so there's a couple of different ways that you can deploy the Cisco FTD here. You can deploy it in layer three mode, which is again like that extra hop in your network, like a routed mode, or you can deploy, deploy it as a layer two device as well. So it's just like a little bump in the wire, uh, and that would be in transparent mode. So there's a couple of different ways to deploy that. Um, and when, when you deploy it in, in one of those modes, the traffic would enter the SSL orchestrator and then the traffic would come down to the Cisco Firepower Threat Defense and then this would do what it needs to do you know, on the traffic and then it would make its decisions or take its action and then send it back up to the SSL orchestrator and then, uh, and then so forth and so on. Then the SSL orchestrator would then send, it, uh, send the traffic on to the other devices and so I'll just put a few different uh, arrows here so it can go back and forth and back and forth like that. Uh, one other way that you can actually deploy the Cisco FTD though is in tap mode, uh, what we'll call tap mode here on this cell orchestrator, but it would be promiscuous or monitor only mode here on the firepower threat defense. And this is where a copy of all the traffic gets sent to the Cisco FTD device. Um, this eliminates a lot of latency, the speed things, speeds things up a little bit. Um, in fact, uh, this, the Cisco FTD could still take action and send alerts to a management tool for mitigation in this mode. It's just not going to do the real-time uh, you know, mitigation action. But a lot of people do that to save, uh, to save time. Um, so, like I said, traffic comes into the SSL orchestrator. This SSL orchestrator, uh, it decrypts the traffic one time and then it sends the traffic based on that classification decision that we talked about to the different devices. So, like, for example, uh, maybe you want your HTTP traffic to go to one device and not another, or you want your FTP traffic to go to another but not another, or maybe you want other traffic to go to all of them, or whatever. You can make all those decisions on the SSL orchestrator. The other thing that it does is it monitors all of these devices, and so it knows in real time the status of each device. So let's say you have a, a pool of Cisco FTD devices, then if one of these goes down, then it would, the SSL orchestrator is going to know that, and then it could just load balance because it has load balancing capability like other F5 Big IP stuff does. Uh, it could just load balance to the other Cisco FTD devices. Uh, whereas if you were to deploy these up here, typically you would need like an active standby situation. Down here you don't have to do that. You can have all of them fully active all the time. Um, the last thing I'll mention here on the SSL Orchestrator is the cipher diversity that it provides. There's a lot of TLS cipher suites that it has to offer. 
And so it can offer those <clears throat> to, the, to the user and or the internet, you know, the outside external users. And so you don't create those blind spots like you would have up here for these other devices that maybe could not handle those, those uh, various TLS cipher suites. So when you put all this together, it's a very powerful solution. And this allows you to inspect the internet traffic that's, that's already encrypted anyway. And you don't have those blind spots, you don't have those issues that you would have run into had you deployed uh, this other uh, scenario up here. So thanks for hanging in there with us on this Lightboard lesson video. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.